Hello, my name is Cammie Chestnut, and I'm a philosophy major at Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the project I am presenting today is entitled Creating Change. This project focuses on the role that visual art and artists, along with imaging, have played in different cultural movements and whether or not they have helped promote the philosophical idea of moral progress. Which leads me to my research question. Does artistic activism promote moral progress? I began my project by first reviewing literature about the philosophy of moral progress and researched the history of artistic activism. Then I explored several different artists and their individual approaches to activism through their art, along with the effects their work has had on the movements they are associated with. I also examined the effects of visual art and imaging on the human brain and its ability to understand information and people's willingness to change. Later on in my presentation, I will show you some of the amazing work done by these artistic activists, but first we need to go over a few terms. What exactly is moral progress? The simple answer is when the core ideas and actions of an individual or a society become better over time. Becoming better can be understood as developing a new or deepened understanding of justice and related moral notions. Philosophers have debated whether or not this is even possible for centuries. Most agree that individuals can show moral progress, but that moral progress within a society is often not possible. Those who believe that moral progress is possible within a society will look to historical events as proof of it. For example, slavery. They will say that we have progressed as a society because slavery was abolished, laws have been put in place that make segregation illegal, and statistically, people are far more accepting of different races than they were 100 years ago. Those who believe that societal moral progress is not possible will look at things like the current Black Lives Matter movement to prove that racial inequality is just as prevalent today, and therefore society as a whole has not gotten any better. However, for this particular project, I am working under the assumption that societal moral progress is possible and can be promoted through individuals' actions. Artistic activism isn't new. Before images were easily mass-produced, many of humanity's moral lessons were taught in story form, captured in stained glass in churches, or performed on stages. However, Artistic activism as we know it today really gained speed in the mid-1900s as media like movies and television became more accessible. Activism, as the name implies, is the activity of challenging and changing power relations. Artistic activism is different because it combines the strategic planning of traditional activism with the creative power the arts have to move people emotionally. Recent developments in cognitive science suggest that humans make sense of the world through stories and symbols that frame the information they receive and then act accordingly, which means a lot of our core beliefs and ideas are attached to the images that we see and the emotions they make us feel. Scientific studies have shown that human beings are incredibly visual creatures. In fact, 50 to 80% of our brain is dedicated to visual processing. This includes our vision, visual memory, color, shapes, movement, and image re recollection. When a person hears a piece of information, three days later they can only recall about 10% of what they heard. But if an image is included with the information, especially if the image is colorful, it will increase recall up to 65%. Basically, our brains like to be stimulated. So when activists use visual art in association with their message, people are more likely to remember it. Before I start really stimulating your brain with images, let me tell you why I chose the artists I will be talking about. To begin with, I wanted to give examples of various styles of art. Not all art is hanging in museums, and I wanted to highlight how artists are taking to the streets and are standing up for their causes in ways that are different from your standard protest. Next, I wanted to show how artistic activism has changed over different eras, but also how artists have taken their own personal moral progress and have utilized a variety of platforms to promote awareness of many different movements. The first artist we will be looking at is the well-known American artist Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell is not often thought of as an activist. He is best known for his illustrated covers done for the popular magazine The Saturday Evening Post. 
the public embraced his style due to its nostalgic nature and endearing representation of American culture that both hinted at the simplicity of the past while still idealizing the present. He worked at the Post for 47 years, but as the political landscape shifted, he grew increasingly frustrated by the restrictions that they had put on him. So in 1963, at the age of 69, he left the Post. Instead of retiring, he began producing work for Look Magazine, where he had the freedom to explore more controversial topics, producing artistic pieces that reached a broader audience than the harsh photographic images of violence that had become associated with the civil rights movement at the time. The image you see here is called The Problem We All Live With. It has become one of the gems of Rockwell's career. It depicts young Ruby Bridges as she walks to her first day at William Prince School. Ruby was one of six students chosen to initiate the desegregation process in New Orleans following the 1954 Supreme Court decision. This painting was honored as a piece of true American history in 2011 when Pre President Barack Obama commissioned it to temporarily hang in the White House as a symbol of the progress that had been made for the equal rights. This acknowledgement by the first Black U.S. president is significant because it shows that Rockwell's work has played some role in promoting moral progress for the nation. Here are other examples of Rockwell's artistic activism. The golden rule on the left is using a popular Christian vernacular alongside emotional depictions of diverse group of people to illustrate that all people of any faith or culture deserve to be treated fairly. While the new kids in the neighborhood on the right shows the innocent curiosity of difference within children while bringing that difference together in a familiar space of a neighborhood. At the end of his career, Rockwell truly desired to change the iconic, mostly white, Christian-centric American narrative that he had propagated for decades. He was aware of the harsh realities of our society's social problems and biases, and wanted to create art that could be emotionally poignant in hopes to inspire all Americans to adjust their perspective, progress, and change for the better. Banksy is a British artist who is a prime example of the shock value that seems to be needed in activism these days. Peaceful protests and marches often go unnoticed or are easily forgotten unless they turn violent, and that violence almost always overshadows the moral lesson that is trying to get out. Just like many activists and protesters, Banksy uses public spaces and civil disobedience to catch people's attention, just in a very different way. He got started in the 1990s with his guerrilla-style graffiti street art. This art form is still considered controversial and illegal, but he has gained a large following due to his unknown identity and his simple but politically charged midnight installations. Although he still rejects his fame as the institutional art world's foolishness, he has taken it and his vigilante platform global, leaving mysterious and always socially radical pieces in cities all over the world. Banksy's works have varied in size from tiny rats in alleyways to messages taking up the side of entire buildings, but recently he has done some enormous installations that have gained a lot of attention. His 2017 Waldorf Hotel, which is a play on the popular and expensive Waldorf hotel chain, is in Bethlehem and built alongside the Israeli West Bank barrier wall, which Banksy has been tagging repeatedly since the early 2000s. It is a functioning hotel and museum dedicated to educating people about Israel's various methods of colonization and control over Palestinians and their history of resistance. These images are of the outside of the hotel and the wall, along with an example of his art that can only be seen if you rent a room for the night. Initially, it was only supposed to be there for a few weeks. However, Banksy decided to keep it open as a way to help revitalize this economically doomed area. Not only did this create positive social change by creating jobs for locals, but the boom in tourist, tourists coming from all over the world indicates that the installation is continuing to raise awareness of the Israeli-Palestine conflict, in turn promoting global moral progress. The last artist we will be looking at is Benjamin Von Wong. He is a Canadian artist, activist, and photographer, best known for his environmental art installations and hyper-realistic style. He is a motivational speaker and an advocate against ocean plastics. This image is from a large installation intended to advance awareness about plastic waste in the oceans. Using 10,000 single-use bottles, 
the number of bottles that would be used on average by one American over the course of 60 years to create an abstract ocean to juxtapose a beautiful dying mermaid. Von Wong is a true digital native with a huge online presence. With nearly 120,000 followers on Instagram alone, he has attracted many big biz name businesses like Dell and Nike to contract him to, to help with different environmental campaigns. Big businesses are often thought of as the bad guys when it comes to the environment, but because of their work with Von Wong, they have been able to make their consumers more aware of the recycling programs that they offer with the hope of reducing their corporate carbon footprint. Von Wong solicits hundreds of local volunteers to help with his installations and makes videos on how they are produced to post on different media outlets as a way of educating people about the causes behind his images. On the left, we see an image from his Strawpocalypse installation called the Parting of the Plastic Sea. Made from 168,000 plastic drinking straws recovered off the streets of Vietnam, this was sponsored by Zero Waste Saigon and Starbucks Vietnam. The one on the right was made possible with the Dell Corporation. Using 4,100 pounds of recyclable electronic waste to create a futuristic world where e-waste is engulfing us. Professional creative images like these are four times more likely to go viral than an everyday picture of a plastic straw floating in the ocean or a box of old computer parts. Viral images that are attached to activist messages indicate that more people are searching for the information they need to make positive changes, again showing the moral progress on a grand scale is possible. Artistic activism is thriving in the contemporary landscape. It is very well suited for an age of cell phones and social networks. Although the media has always influenced the information we receive, thanks to the internet, we are well past the days of relying on a few local TV stations and the Sunday paper to gain an understanding about the world around us. With access to broader scale, a broader scale of information through streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, along with social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, we are bombarded with images almost constantly, and these images are changing the way we feel about things, whether we know it or not. Artistic activists are taking advantage of this and creating opportunities for people to engage in conversations about social issues that are important to them, and they are doing it in a very effective way. The old cliche says a picture is worth a thousand words, and the images like Von Wong's Mermaid are far more powerful than reading an environmental policy report. We are more connected than ever as a global society. Part of that is because of artists like the ones we examine today. Viral imaging has played a significant role in building those important global bonds. There has definitely been a shift in how the world is responding to social issues. People all over the planet are not only sharing information, but voicing a loud response in support of different movements, looking back again at the Black Lives Matter movement and the viral video that sparked the recent events surrounding the death of George Floyd. It is not just US citizens that are responding, it is the world. Yes, racial inequality is still very prevalent and there's a lot of moral progress to be made, but this response shows that we are progressing together as a global society. Opportunities have become available for everyone with access to social media to join these movements. The more we share, the more we are connected. I believe that this emotional connection, along with powerful images and thoughtful messaging, will not only continue to promote moral progress, but will drive it, into, drive it in the future. Although there may not be policy put in place that will fix the environment or stop inequality, we are seeing more and more individuals express that they want change. With the help of a few more powerful artistic activists, those changes will be right around the corner. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my mentor, Dr. Kara Barnett, for her support of my project, along with the faculty and staff at Westminster College, especially those in the McNair program, my awesome McNair cohort, and of course, my little family, and all of you for taking time out of your lives to listen to my research. Thank you.